What's up, y'all? Welcome back to a push-up convention. I'm your host, the guy standing in the corner of your room as you sleep. It's like, yeah, bro. Yo, I, I told, I don't know if I ever said this anywhere, but I wanted to do a bit for like, this was going to be a last uh, uh, April Fool's Day. Luke did a bit where like he pretended to do noise music and he just went like in the microphone. And I was like, yo, we should have just like made that a track, like a noise music song, put it on Bandcamp, just like not tell anyone. Just see, what, like, see what, not touch it, just see what happens. Stretch it out to like 45 minutes, cut it up so it's like a seamless like album. And then <laughs> it will be like... Dude, fucking noise music. You could do it. Crazy. Someone who knows how to make noise music do that to my when I Dude, I can literally do that. I can literally do that. Like You probably could. But it, it wouldn't like be funny if like, I already said it. Yeah, but you yeah, but yeah, but like you do it, but like don't tell anyone what the album is called or what the artist name yeah, is. Yeah, just put it somewhere. Just, like, let See if it gets it big. Out. See if it gets big. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, and then ten years from now they're gonna be like, it's I big. made this out of some guy blowing into the microphone <laughs> and it was a This is the original sample. Yeah, Yo, could you imagine? That'd be funny. And we all put them on just band like camp. Ten, <laughs> just like 10 people in a room at the same time being like, alright, we gotta go. <laughs> That's gonna sound so good. It would probably be bad noise music, but like... I might do it now. Guess what I did. Music. What is it? That is a great question. Music is a wide umbrella that covers many different types of sound. You got your hip hops, you got your electronics, you got whatever the fuck Doja Cat makes. But one genre still clouds the minds of music fans to this day. From your average shoes off in my household type of kid, to the most insane internet music nerds who just got finished listening to Long Season. Noise music. Now y'all probably know the history of noise music by now. But What's that? You don't? Alright, well, watch this real quick so you can get caught up to speed with the rest of the class. So, funny story. I was sitting at my computer one day playing Sumatory Dreams and I got a message from a bucket of Jake himself. The message pretty much said, Hey Deputy Doofus, wanna be in my noise music video? And honestly, it got me thinking. Do it! Noise music is a niche and underrated genre that deserves to be spoken about. Don't do it. Noise music sucks, you suck, and also, you're a bitch. Uh, obviously, I said yes, because, dude, it's a bucket of Jake. I can't pass that up. So, now I'm here, and I've been tasked with talking about the infamous genre known as noise music. <laughs> noise music is a genre of, well, music that was created in the 1910s by a man named Luigi Rosolo. Because of course the Italians would make something that sounds like banging trash can lids for an hour. Here's hoping this is right, because I bumped all the information off of Wikipedia, so if I'm wrong, <laughs> I don't know, sue me or something. The point of noise music is, strangely enough, not to sound good, which is admittedly a very weird concept to take in. It isn't differently sounding out of rebellion or style like other genres, but rather it's a complete deconstruction of what makes music sound good. This is surprisingly actually really cool. Before this video, I had a very basic understanding of noise music in general as it never really appealed to me. Sure, I knew of its existence, but I only ever really heard samples from talent such as Mersbo or Boris. Hearing Woodpecker by Merzbo as an introduction to noise music is the equivalent of walking into your kitchen and getting f***ing flashbang, by the way. From the moment you put on nearly any noise track, your senses are completely overloaded. It floods your ears and your mind with exactly what it's called. Noise. It's wicked, it's cruel, it's ugly, but for that reason, it's beautiful. Listening to noise music is arguably beneficial because after spending so long flooding yourself with said noises of delirium, the moment you turn it off and listen to something softer, you'll immediately begin to appreciate every individual instrument so much more. Bass lines will be stronger, vocals will be more pronounced, 
Since we'll be poppier, you'll be getting the whole Disney IMAX experience. Noise music serves as a basis to the phrase, how far can we push the limits, in an art that's already constantly expanding. While noise music is absolutely an acquired taste, and it definitely isn't for everyone, there's a certain level of appreciation that goes into the genre for how completely insane it is. Despite what you may think, the art of noise is one that is very important, and without it, the world of music would be vastly different. But with my speech aside, I'd like to thank Jake for having me and give it back to him. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> A big thank you to Nakey Jakey for helping me out with the history. Hmm? That wasn't Nakey Jakey? And who the fuck did I just PayPal? Now, noise music is a pretty sensitive topic for me because you probably get an idea from watching my videos that I fucking love noise music, you know? The disintegration loops, Panda Jing has a lot of elements of noise in her music, and fuck, everywhere at the end of the time, stages four, five, and six are pretty much noise albums. But those are different. They either have noise in their work or they show a gradual degradation of sound. An artist can technically be a noise musician but have other elements of their work that keep them away from that label. And there are plenty of artists that I really enjoy who do that. My point is, there's a fine line between noise noise in music and noise music. I think a better phrase here would be harsh noise music. Ah, harsh noise musicians. You got your Mersbau, uh, your uh, the Rita, uh, they were uh, cosigned by clipping. Uh, you got your, um, yeah, harsh noise music personally, not a fan, don't really like the stuff. It just kind of seems like noise to me, but not in a good way. They're headache inducing sounds, they're barely changing track list, and the absurd lengths of some of these fucking things really just puts a pin to my side. So I got to thinking, sat down, turned on my camera, wrote a script, started talking to you. How difficult is it to make noise music? So I had this idea back on the Good Enough podcast, and you should watch that. We're pretty fucking funny, dude. And no joke, later that night, as soon as we turn off the cameras, I started my multi-month journey for you to watch the video you're watching now. I set off on a track to make a harsh noise album and plant my seed in noise music history. So the beginning was a blank slate. I had no fucking idea what to do at all. Somewhere in the original drafts in my brain, I thought it'd be a good idea to just take a Merzbau album, drop it by four cents, and then upload it, but... It kind of lost the point that I was going for, and I don't know, I don't really swing with that whole stealing people's content sort of thing. So I needed to establish some ground rules if I wanted this to be a successful experiment. I gave myself two goals to accomplish. One, how easy is it to make a noise album? And two, what makes noise music good? One of those goals will be much easier than the other, but you'll see that as the video goes on. What the fuck is going on with my computer? Do I get a virus? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> green screen Jake. Everyone mark it on your bingo boards. I think this video needed a little spicing up. Uh, you know, I can do pretty well sitting at my chair over there, but there's something about me standing in front of the green screen that just it just brings out the, the devil in me. Also, chair Jake is going to need some fixes because he was uh, lackluster, I guess you could say. All right, so let's talk about how we made this thing. So stealing was out of the question. I wanted to make sure that I made this 100% myself and with as little outside plugins as possible. So my battle station will be FL Studio. I know, pretty disgusting for all you audio nerds out there, but it's what I grew up on and Soldier Boy made it, and I refuse to learn the rocket science that is Ableton. So this is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, I forgot to save the working file when I made this thing, but like that, I always save the fucking working file. I, I always do. But I don't, fuck, I don't know, man. It was a real dick in the zipper kind of moment. So I kind of had to Frankenstein this thing back together for demonstration purposes today. So not everything will be 100% accurate, but you guys will, you'll get the feel of it. So I needed to start, and I had no fucking idea where to start. I saw somewhere on the internet that a good way to make noise music is if you just turn the mic gain as high as it can go and just scream. And that sounds like a great way of blowing out my microphone, so that one's out. So I thought, let's get even more meta. So I grabbed this audio from the Good Enough Podcast, which was the same audio that you heard in the beginning of this video, and I brought it into FL Studio. After that, I isolated the part where me and Jax were kind of fucking around doing the noises. Then I took that audio and I stretched it as far as FL Studio would let me, but it wasn't far enough. I put it back into FL Studio and stretched the stretched audio as far as that would let me go. Added some bass and distorted the audio really crazy like, really freaking crazy guys. It sounded a little something like this. Good, but not really noisy enough. 
So I stretched the audio one more time, doubled it, moved it in different spots so it would play over itself. I added a final bit of distortion and a splice sample to really beef up the bass. Not sponsored, but I love your product. And that really gave it the headache-inducing charm I was looking for. Then essentially, I had the entire album in front of me, but it's one long chunk of noise. So I took the one long brick of noise that I had, I sectioned off each of the songs at different varying lengths, chopped them, and then saved them so that they would act as individual songs to create a free-flowing album. And after that, I slapped the export button and clock in at a whopping 36 minutes. I hold to you the key to noise music history in the palm of my hard drive. You have not seen the last of Green Screen Jake. I promise you that. Now listen to this stupid fuck talk as I enjoy my Mountain Dew. Thanks, Green Screen Jake. Appreciate it. I actually have to put this thing somewhere. I can't just let it rot on my hard drive. So technically, if I wanted to, I could put this on major streaming services because it's I own all the stuff, but that shit's lame, bro. You gotta put noise music where the real noise albums hang out. The Spencers of the Internet Bandcamp. I love Bandcamp. I've used their platform before. Shameless plug, if you're curious. So I know I found the perfect home for this. Okay, now what? For all my marketing majors out there, time for the fun part. Branding. I need to think of a name, album cover, track list, album title. So first, let's start with the name. I wanted to go with something that was sort of dark, but not too dark. Dirty, but not too dirty. Pure, but also murky, like oil. <gasps> Mersbau. Oh wait, fuck, that one's taken. So this project will forever be known as Purified Oil. Some people in my Discord uh, just had a shiver go down their spine when I said that. It sounds cool and it looks very nice stylized in all lowercase letters. Album title, easy. We needed something that was disarmingly sweet. Something that'll make the people listening go like, that's not what it sounds like. <laughs> Why is it called that? Totally different vibe than I was expecting. Damn, my chair didn't like that joke. So after brainstorming, I came up with a word that perfectly match what I was going for. Ladies and gentlemen, Purified Oil's debut album will forever be known as Joy. Next, track list. Fairly easy. I just went my noodle and thought of intense sounding words that can vaguely be biblical, because I don't know why, but noise bitches, they love their biblical references. Boy, howdy, I'll give you that much. So the track list goes as such. Faith in God, abolish, deep breaths of a vessel, mm bunch of things because you gotta have that one track that motherfucker looks like fell asleep on a keyboard anyway joy and my final message so we got the name we got the title we got the track list we're ready to fucking upload this thing baby ah uh, 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 not so fast you're missing the most important part of an album release kids say it with me album, album covers. covers yeah album, album cover so I don't know how much of your Jake lore you brushed up on before clicking on this video but I'm a professional graphic designer by day youtuber by night so this part was the one I was looking forward to the most I needed something that went hard, but was also disarmingly normal. I thought old public domain oil paintings would do the trick here, and I was absolutely correct. The image I found and what will be considered the Joy album cover is titled An Arctic Summer Boring Through the Pack in Melville Bay by William Bradford. It sounds fucking awesome already. I barely even, I should have used that as the title, fuck. This was perfect. All I had to do was drop the saturation, crop into a square, and that's the album cover. Now this is the point I create the Bandcamp page. Now, anyone who's ever made a Bandcamp can tell you it's pretty easy to make, but it's also pretty easy to just leave bland and boring. So I wanted to add some spice, make the Bandcamp page look nice, and add little cryptic messages everywhere to have people look into a little bit more to give them a feeling that they're going on a journey. So on the Bandcamp page, I sprinkled around a little extra things to have people think, ooh, this looks nice and is interesting. I want to add some really cryptic shit, so in the description for the artist, I wrote, I told you it was just a matter of when, not if. Whoa! And in the description of the album, something that I'm most proud of, all men can fly, you just have to try. Ladies and gentlemen, we uploaded this puppy to Bandcamp, slapped everything together, and boom. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Joy by Purified Oil. Alright, goal one. How easy is it to make a noise album? Complete. Dumb fuck like me? Did it somewhat successfully. Now, for all my accounting majors out there, that's 50% of my goal completed. Now, for the really good accounting majors out there, I have another 50% that I need to complete. Can noise music fans tell the difference between good and bad noise music? That's a question that I've been noodling around my brain for a little bit, even before I made this video, because it's the classic thing like, oh, how can you tell a difference? And that's what I wanted to know. How can noise music fans tell a difference between the shit that they're listening to? So I thought if I combined these two ideas, I can create something very interesting. And guys, you're not going to believe it. Like, I posted the thing on Bandcamp, and it just... 
it started getting traction. I started getting organic views and listens and it was, it was fucking crazy. Like my plan was working perfectly. It was working too perfectly. And then just fucking out of nowhere, Bandcamp put up a page about it. Like they wrote about it. And I was like, this is, it's perfect. This is exactly what I need to make this video amazing. And then I looked on Reddit on r slash noise music. It's like, it's on there and people are talking about it. I didn't fucking put that anywhere. That was crazy. I'm looking at it. And I'm like, this is, this is go going beyond anything I could have wanted. And not only did it get on Reddit, it made it to the top of r slash noise music. I was freaking the fuck out. I was like, holy shit, what have I just made here? It was, it was insane. And dude, because of that, so many more people were getting, coming by, listening. It was insane. I got emails from record labels saying, hey, we want to sign you. We're going to make vinyls of joy. Dude, like, this, it was going fucking insane. And they told me that they're going to sign me. They said that I'm going to play the Super Bowl and merch about my fucking dad. Yeah, nobody gave a shit because it's a noise album on Bandcamp. There's probably been like 35 albums uploaded since you clicked on this video. I dropped an unknown product in a saturated market and I suffered for it. But I couldn't end it there. I needed some kind of feedback for my brain to tell me that this was a worthwhile experience. Uh. After some Reddit spamming and having some Discord monkeys spam shit on the Fantano server, I realized I had to use my platform for evil. Now this is where the chills start to get a little intense, and I'm not talking about Burger King foot lettuce. So I thought, where can I go that I could get organic feedback about an album that is not accessible in any way, shape, or form? I reached out to you guys. I put a call to action in my Discord to find the ones who really enjoy noise music. I posted on my Discord, roughly saying, for those who would consider themselves enjoyers of noise music, would you like to participate in an experiment? In quotations for a video. If you're a YouTuber, put that in any fucking thing you ever say. Oh my god, you will get flooded with responses. Uh. I kept it very vague. I wanted to make sure that I didn't just post the album in the public thing. I made it a point to individually DM each of the people saying, would you like to participate in the experiment? Giving it almost like, oh, he's giving a bunch of different people different albums to talk about noise musics. But that was not the case. I kept it very vague. I just presented them with the album and I never let on at all that I was behind this. I didn't tell them what scheme I was doing. For all that they know, I was making a video about noise music, not how to make it. So thank you for everyone on my Discord. I got an uproar of response. A bunch of very nice people gave me very nice written responses. I'm not going to be able to read every single review that I got. So I just kind of picked and choose a little bit from everyone to create one big cohesive story about joy. Now for all my horse noise enjoyers out there, this is what your comrades had to say about an album that I created. Purified Oil. The album is made up of sounds of a loud firework display, a Home Depot buzzsaw, and screaming so deafening it would make Corey Feldman blush. All non-stop whilst on crack. Super crack. I think the harsh noise peaks at the song, which is good at only 20 seconds or something. Funnier song is named Faith in God, because by the time I'd finished it, I had lost all mine. While the album is hard to listen to, I still have deep respect for it. It comes from a place not to have any real gain from it, but it is created to simply exist. To just exist. It is kind of like a harsh piece of visual abstract art, simply to evoke emotion, while not good or bad, but just a specific emotion. That is all I am, Jake, and I am a doo-doo piss stinky boy, and I like stinky said said that I will read the whole review in a video. And this is still part of the review, so I'll have to say that. I like doo-doo and pee-pee and hummus. And sniffing and poo-poo and pee-pee. And stinky butts. And demogus. And Sholem Goldberg. It doesn't feel like someone that is used to making harsh noise. Songs are short as f Like the project. And it feels... Off. Most of the time you can see a pattern formed in harsh noise songs. Where here it feels kind of random, IMO. Still liked it. TBH, good shit. Oh, and some sounds sound like it was made from someone with a mic, where most of the harsh noise things I've heard, you can't really make much out of it. After listening to this with no pauses, I have three words to follow up. What the fuck? I'm saying this not as I didn't enjoy this, I am saying what the fuck because I am utterly surprised that I like this. 
My thoughts on this album are that it felt like an odyssey. A journey through an icy, apocalyptic hellscape with no one in sight. You take deep breaths, ready to be consumed by whatever is thrown at you. Just then, the torture starts to feel enjoyable. And just as it's about to succumb you into this infinite hell, you let out one last sigh. Your final message of it relief and pleasure, just as this torture storm consumes you. As an empath, genius, reviewer, and renowned legend, I believe that this album might possibly not be as joyous as its name suggests. The track titles and lengths were fucking with me as well, especially the 13 second... I assumed it to be some sort of break before the horrors got worse, but no, just more of the same. I think as an album, I'd only listen once for more or less obvious reasons but it still definitely was an experience. Side note, I find it kind of funny that they decided to get the album copyrighted. I can imagine some dude's microphone glitching on stream and his channel getting taken down or some shit. Jake says he didn't even know he copyrighted it, but he will fix that. If I were to show you a picture of what this album sounds like, it would be this picture I drew. Now you can easily look at that and say, that's just a bunch of fucking scribbles. That isn't art. But for some people, there's something fascinating about it. And that's what I found with this album. But with this just blew me away in a great way, this album sounds like if you put a microphone into the engine of a nearly old broken down Ford Mustang that still has enough power in it to drive across the whole US at like 150 miles per hour. As a fan of somewhat experimental and harsh music that is uncomfortable for most people's ears, this was a great, dark, eerie, interesting, enjoyable, adjective, and most of fucking harsh listen. As of now, I'm giving this a 9.5 out of 10. I enjoyed the fuck out of it. Thanks for sending it to me, man. I definitely see me maybe giving this a 10 on future listens, but we'll see. I loved it, though. Each track piles up even more and more layers of noise. Screeching metal, animalistic shouts of what one can only presume is pain, bassy and low murmuring sounds. From track one to track two, the difference is substantial. It all utilizes the same palette of noises, but the second track is way more harsh and assaults you with all of the color it can offer. Much like the track's last name, that being my final message, this whole album feels like a giant insult to everything and everyone that might come across it. It's like it doesn't want you to listen. It wants to drive you away from itself. It's angry, confused, and confusing. The ethos of harsh noise. Even though the album is titled Joy, the songs themselves are pure chaos. Something worth mentioning before I move on with the review is the cover, which is William Bradford's Arctic Summer, who was once a marine painter, and he painted the cover on his last expedition in 1869. Uh, Jake would like to take this moment to say he is proud of this person for finding this image, mad respect. For what I tried, I found zero mentions of this group on the internet, besides one Reddit user who also doesn't know anything about the group and was trying to find out more. And I think that's for the best. The songs are kind of repetitive, coming from a person who's heard noise albums before, but the aesthetic of the album itself, the vibe, fits pretty nicely. Six out of ten on this one. There's not one surefire way to review a harsh noise album. While there may be individual tracks, most of the time they blend together into an amalgamation of harsh feedback and barrages of distorted vocals. And that's no different for Purified Oil's album, Joy. This album feels desperate, a repeated attempt at doing something, whether it be something as simple as getting out of bed, or as the description of the album says, all men can fly, you just have to try, something seemingly impossible. Purified Oil's Joy is what the end of the world sounds like. 
Hopeless doesn't even start to describe how I felt trying to listen to this. Joy is an apocalyptic hellhole, and I love every second of it. There are few moments of bliss on Joy, but when there is, I feel as if I don't get to appreciate them. Joy is an incredible noise album, and I'm excited to hear more from this artist. 8 out of 10. If you would like to listen and review this album, check out their Rate Your Music and Album of the Year pages, and let me know what you think. I've been Mac McCall, and this has been Purified Oil's Joy. Until next time. So, what have we learned today, after somewhat successfully completing my two goals? Noise music is a tricky thing to get into. I don't think anyone's arguing against that. And even the people who enjoy noise music don't really seem like they have specifics they're looking for. It's more of a vibe and a, a feel that they're looking for, which was something I was not expecting going into this. I think if I could boil down how I have started to understand noise music from the responses that I received would be two words. Rorschach test. For those who don't know, a Rorschach test is what they use for therapy. They'd uh, blot some ink on a piece of paper, fold it in half, show the subject, and ask them, what do you see? And the whole point of it is it's vague. The interesting part is what they see out of these abstract creations. And that's the whole point of it. From the nature of it, it's not supposed to really be anything. It's supposed to be a wall of noise that you project your own meaning onto. I essentially gave them a blank canvas with some splatters on it, and they made meaning out of it. Because art is inherently meaningless. We give meaning to art. And that goes the same for noise music as for any type of art. Even after this experiment, I don't think I'd consider myself a noise music enjoyer, but I can see where noise music enjoyers are coming from. And I can respect the point of view they have while listening to this crazy shit. Noise music is more of a vibe than a detailed checklist that people are looking for. It's a reset button for your senses and for your palate. So even if it only took me 45 minutes to complete this album, then mission accomplished. If someone enjoys it out there, it's good enough for me. Have you been like that the whole video? Come on, show them your face. So I have this noise album in my possession now, and I have no fucking idea what to do with it. The cat's kind of out of the bag, so it's not really fun to just give this to people anymore. If you are a noise music enjoyer and like to judge my skills, then it's free on Bandcamp if you like to check it out. But again, it felt incomplete. I needed something drastic and intense to wrap this video up. So I got to thinking again. What is something drastic that I can do to end this video? I own the music. The artwork is public domain. And it looks really cool. Let's make a vinyl. Why not, dude? Fuck it. Who are you to tell me what I can and cannot do on my own channel? I like the cut of that guy's jib. He does make a good point. Who the fuck are you to tell me what I can and cannot do? That's why Green Screen Jake is back. Hell yeah, baby. So Jake, you're probably asking, how the fuck are you going to make a vinyl record? Well, God you ass, brother. So Jackson Burns showed me this website that I think I'm going to use as the home for Purified Oil's joy. It is called Q-Rates. It's kind of like a Kickstarter, but for vinyl records, essentially. So you put all your information in, design the record, price it, and then put it up. And if you reach the vinyl purchase threshold, then you and everyone purchasing is going to get a beautiful vinyl record delivered right to your door. Oh my God. This isn't sponsored, by the way. Believe me, I tried. This is just me explaining to you how I'm doing things and how you can purchase it. The design options are honestly pretty freaking crazy. You can, you can design some wacky shit with this. There's no upfront purchase for you making a vinyl. And if it doesn't reach the threshold, then like it never fucking happened. Poof, gone. This seems like a no brainer. I'd be an idiot to not do this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is hopefully the official joy by Purified Oil Vinyl Record. Great googly moogly look at that. One disc pressed on gorgeous neon yellow and void gray vinyl. I know I made that thing, but damn, it looks nice. I don't that thing. I was really trying to keep a balance between quality and price. I really tried to go all out with this thing while also trying to keep it as, you know, affordable as I could. This is not about me making money. This is just wanting to create something and have people own it. Cause not only do I think it's very cool, but I think it's very funny that my first piece of channel merch will be a vinyl record of a meme album I created. So if you sitting at home would like to purchase your own copy of Joy by Purified Oil, the link will be down in the description below. Now keep in mind, this is like Kickstarter, so there is a limited window of when you can purchase this thing. Keep in mind, this vinyl will only be available for 75 days. That is right, only available for 75 from the time this video goes up until May 11th. So act fast. 
So if you're watching this on Patreon, there will not be a link in the description. You can only purchase this thing when the video hits the main channel. Sorry, I'm really trying to count my eggs before they hatch. This is some scary shit. I've never dealt with anything like this before. I'm scared to put out a hat or a t-shirt. You think I'm not scared of a vinyl record? This thing's terrifying me. I need a sip of Mountain Dew to calm my nerves. <sighs> And also remember, these will only be made if we can successfully sell 200 of these. And if we don't, y'all get a refund and I just move on with my life, I guess. That's the joy of the company I'm using. I don't have to buy a bunch of fucking stock of vinyl if no one's gonna buy it. So fuck it. Let's see what happens. So don't fucking make me look bad. Or do. I really don't give a shit. Nothing will happen to you. Nothing will happen to me. It will just make me feel really bad and shame will be cast over my family, so... Do with that information what you will. Links in the description. Go fucking buy it. So, I may not have become the next Mersbau as I originally hoped I would in this video. I was doing this as an experiment to see if I could make noise music that was good, on par, or worse than what's already out there. Give it to people who enjoy it and get a glowing review from those I'm looking to impress. And hey man, what people like is subjective. If you jam out to shit like this, then more power to you, brother. I'm just not personally that infatuated by it. Maybe in the next coming months or even years, I'll become a noise music enjoyer, but as of now, I think I'm in skeptically optimistic, let's put myself as. Noise music is an interesting subgenre, and even if I'm not particularly a fan of it, I'm glad it exists because there's a market for anything out there, and if it brings you joy, and it brings me joy. That was a fucking good way to end it, brother. Good job. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you were in the camp of people that I tricked to make this video possible, I am sorry, but you said you liked it. Like I said, no disrespect to noise musicians. This was just something I wanted to do personally because it's a very interesting topic to me, infiltrating genres and seeing if I can, you know, m camouflage myself into being one of them. Oh, fuck. Kick the fucking green screen. I told you I'd be back. I knew Chair Jake would fuck this up. I just want to get on here and thank the incredibly talented people who helped make this video possible. Fang the Werewolf and Mac McCall. I saw Fang the Werewolf's channel after checking out a Pat Changton video and oh my god, th that is the most schizophrenic editing I've ever seen in my entire life. I jokingly say it's, you know, Nakey Jakey-esque, but he's inspired by it and I thought it looked really fucking cool and I just needed to get him in the video. So everyone go check out Fang the Werewolf's channel. I'm a big fan. Uh, my favorite video is personally the uh, News at 11 video. I know he's, uh, I'm not making Vaporwave, but I'm saying it. Do it! Also, I'm pretty sure I kept this guy up until like 7 a.m. working on this video. So if that doesn't warrant a check out his channel, then I don't know what does. Big props to this man. Big props. And Mac McCall. Me and him go way back. He's been in the Good Enough Podcast. He's been on the Big Fish. He's been here. He's been there. He's been in your grandma's underwear. But yes, as soon as I received reviews for this album, I knew that I needed to get the most beautiful British voice to narrate it. And then Gordon Ramsay was taken, so I asked Mac. But yes, real shit. He's a very cool guy. Go follow him and listen to his music. I'm a big fan, personally. That's why he's in a bunch of my shit. And also, if you out there have listened to this album, because I polled my audience, and about 53% of you said that you listen to noise music, uh, give this a listen. And I'm curious to see, knowing the context of how I made it, if you still think it's good or if you think this is dog shit. I'm just, I'm, I'm curious. Just put it in the comment section below. I want to know. Start a conversation and then make a meme of the thumbnail and put it in the fucking Fantano server. <laughs> it is kind of a shame I'm never going to be able to do this format again. Can't really go covert ops on my fans twice. Wearing a heavy winter jacket was a questionable style decision, but uh, I've made my bed and now I'm going to lay in it. A quick one to shout out my patrons for helping me make the content that you see on the channel. They actually saw this video five days early. Leave a like if you were here five days early. And I appreciate you because they helped me support the channel and put money back into it, which, hey man, I love that shit. So a big thank you to Luke On Demand, Mickey T, Noah Hardy, Evan Wells, Mahol and Kai, Mr. Person, Sammy, Channel, Jackson McLeod, Josiah Brown, Maul Ghost, Devin the Shooter Jones, Ethan Ben, Zachary Sales, Damon Alzon, Ashton Bell, Jackson Burns, Zad 500, Just a Pierced Hot Dog, and Daniel Bodo Toth. Bodo Toth. B O D O T O T H. Fire. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. And just to be crystal clear, that vinyl thing was like 100% serious. Uh, just in case you were waiting for the big JK. Uh, it's real. The vinyl is really down there. Like, look in the description. <laughs> if you'd like to pick it up and own a piece of a bucketed jig history and developing noise music history, be my guest. Uh, like I said, I'm going to stress the number 200 because we got to reach the 200 threshold for these to be made. And if they don't, I will just 
bring shame upon my family, I guess, but hey, it's whatever. Back to the patrons real quick. If I did the whole vinyl campaign correctly, then I should be getting some test pressings in of the record. And I think for patrons, I think that I'm also going to be, you know, doing a little giveaway with some of the test pressings because why not? Fuck it. If we don't make the threshold or if by some miracle we sell out and this video gets a second life in the future, check the description because I think I might add a little restock option if uh, all goes well. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And as long as you remember that no obscure noise album is truly safe from the stamp of Bucket of Jake then you're all set. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it, and have a pleasant day. It is kind of like a peach. Peach. Fuck off. You can edit this, dude. I, I can't be bothered. <laughs>